A couple of years ago I did a tutorial showing how to make these 3D logos with Resolve Studio and the Crocodove plugin. I've updated it. We can now do it in Resolve 3 and without the Crocodove plugin. Okay, so in Resolve 3 and no Crocodove plugin. Couple of caveats. It's way more fiddly to do than the Crocodove method. Unfortunately, with the release of 18.5 of Resolve, Crocodove broke. And as of yet, I haven't seen a sort of fix or a replacement, so we don't have Crocodove if you're in 18.5 onwards. I think this is 18.6 onwards when they introduced the S Polygon node and the Extrude 3D node. Grab yourself a brew. I'm not sure how long this is going to last, but I'll do it as quickly as I can. And we'll kick off with the easiest example, which is the Twitter logo. Grab a Fusion Comp and bring it onto your timeline. If you haven't got your Fusion Comps favorited, then it's in the Effects library. It's under Effects and it's generally at the top here. Hop into Fusion. Okay, once you're in Fusion, first thing you're going to need to do is convert your logo. So I've got the logo as a PNG, which is fine, but it won't work for this. We need it as an SVG. To convert your logos to SVG, there is a script from Reactor that will do it for you, but it doesn't work for me, so I end up having to do it the long way around. The long way around to me is to go to this website. There's lots of converters, but I just find this one works, so I stick with it. Convertio.co, and you're looking to convert your files from PNG to SVG. To convert your file, you basically get your PNG, drag it onto the website, let it do its thing, hit convert. Once it's finished converting, hit download and you will end up with an SVG. So the next thing we need to do is get that SVG into Resolve. To do that, you would come to the Fusion menu, import SVG and navigate to where your SVG was saved and double click it. It will ask you what size you want it go around 500. This brings in an SVG node. If you double click it, it opens up and what you see inside are a couple of backgrounds and a path or many paths, as you will see later on. For the Twitter logo, there's only one path and it's the shape of the bird. To get this into a state that you can extrude it is where you need one of the new nodes, which is S Polygon. So click away from your SVG shift space bar and type s poly or polygon now to get this path into this node you need to select the path first and then in your viewer drag select so that all the points are highlighted put your mouse over one of the points right click come down to path one polyline and choose copy now, if we select our S polygon node and put it into the other viewer, if you now right click S polygon one polyline and paste. Now what you'll find happens, and I don't know why it happens, but it's a pain in the bum, is that it sticks your path somewhere off screen. I don't know why it does it. Maybe they'll sort that out in the next update or something. I don't know, but anyway, we have our path inside this polygon. Now what we need to do with this polygon is to add another node, the other new node I mentioned. So shift space bar and type extrude. And you're looking for extrude 3D. Add that. Make sure they're connected. Now if you put this into a viewer, you find yourself in 3D space. And at the minute, you've got a flat Twitter logo. 
but if you come to the top of the screen where this dot is and click it, this turns on simulated lighting. And then you can come to your inspector and push up the extrude depth. And you can see that it will extrude to the shape of whatever this path or polygon was. And you've pretty much got your 3D logo. A couple of things to bear in mind to make life easier. If you select the extrude logo, we're going to move the pivot from this bottom corner to the middle of your logo. To do that, come to the inspector in the translation section. You're going to set X and Y to minus 0.5. And then you're going to open the pivot section at the bottom if it's not already open and set the X and Y pivot to 0.5. We're also going to want to move the Z pivot because by default it sits at the back of your shape and if you want to spin this it's going to spin from the back of the shape rather than the middle. So to work out where to put your pivot all you need to do is if you go back to controls look at what depth you had your extrusion at. So in this case it's 0.1056 come back to the transform in the Z pivot type 0.1056 divided by 2 and that will put your pivot bang in the middle of your logo. Once you've got your logo set up you can then light it so select your extrude node come to your hot bar here these are all your 3D commonly used 3D tools you'll need a merge a camera a spotlight and a render 3D. The render 3D puts your image, which you can't see at the minute, back into your 2D environment, which can then go back to the timeline. Select the render 3D and check lighting and shadows. Now, if you select your camera, check use target and then pull back or pull forward on the z-axis you can see that your logo will eventually appear in your screen. Select your spotlight, again transform, again use target. What use target does is it makes either the camera or the light or whatever object you're, you've selected point at the origin, so the middle of your logo. So again, pull back on Z and now you can see that it's starting to light up. Because the light's full on, the color's not great or the light is not great. So if you move it off to a side, uh, maybe that way and then up a bit. And you can see you're starting to get some sort of shading. The last thing you need to do is add some color. So come back to your extrude node. If you put your original PNG into your viewer, come to the materials tab of the extrude, check overwrite diffuse color, and then grab the eyedropper and just drop it on the blue of your PNG. Now when you render or view the renderer, you've got the right color. And if you now select the extrude node, go to transform, and you can use the Y rotation to rotate your logo. Once you have everything set up and animated how you want it, take the output from your renderer and drop it onto the media out. And now when you go back to the edit page, your logo is visible. So that's the basic principle. Um, if you've got a flat logo, that's it, you've done. You don't need to go on. However, if your logo isn't flat or has multiple elements, it gets a bit more tricky and we'll cover that in the next part. So, for example, if we bring in another fusion comp. Take this one into fusion. So with the new Twitter or X logo. You've got two distinct colors, so you've got the black. Of the lozenge that it sat on 
and then the white of the X. So for that you'd need to make two separate extrude paths. Again we need to go through the process of making the SVG and once you've done that you can import it. Again you don't need it that big so you can drop it down to 500 or so. Doesn't need to be exact but somewhere around there. Now if we look at the SVG for our logo you can see that we've got a couple more paths. So you've got the main black lozenge path, which is this one. No, it's not. It's the first one. So that would make our lozenge. So again, we're going to do the whole S polygon thing. So shift space bar S poly, bring it in, select our path, drag, select all the points. Right click, polyline, sorry, path one, polyline, copy, select your polygon into the viewer, right click, S polygon one, polyline, paste. And again, it sticks it up in the top, which is not what we want, but it's what we've got. Add the extrude. And again, we're going to go through the nonsense of putting the pivot in the right place. And now we can extrude that to whatever depth we want. Again, turn your light on so you can see what's happening. So that's the first part done. The second part's a bit trickier, as promised. So your X is made up of path two, which is the outline of the X, and then path three, which is this cutout bit here. So to work that, we're going to first make a polygon for the X, so path two or path one dash two. So click away from anything, S polygon, if I could spell, it would help. Select your path one underscore two, drag, copy, S poly into the window, select it, paste, And this is our X. And now we need another polygon for our bar in the middle. So click away, add another S poly. Select the path for your bar in the middle, drag and copy. Select your new polygon and put it in the window and paste and now what you've got somewhere off your screen is two polygons you've got your x and you've got your bar so what we need to do is cut this bar out of the middle of our x so if you select your x do shift space bar and type s boolean Make sure your big X is connected into the yellow input and then put your bar into the green input and view that. If we now set select S boolean and set the operation to subtract. And now what you end up with, although you can't see it, is if we add an extrude 3D to this, and view it as you end up with your X with the hole cut in the middle.
So again, just to keep things tidy, we're going to put the pivot into the middle. Now what we can do is if we merge these two together, so bring the output of one extrude onto the output of the other, and view it, we can see that we've got our tablet for the black already. What we can do just to make things clearer is we can actually change the colour of our tablet to black. Now if we come to the extrude for our X, you can see it's just sat on the back of the, the lozenge. So what we're going to do is just move ever so slightly forward so it comes off the back of your lozenge. And now if we go to the extrude control, we can pull that out. And what will happen is that our X will magically appear in front of our lozenge. So you've got your raised X on your lozenge. The midpoint for this, when we were setting your pivot, I would put to the half the, the extrude distance of the longest element. So for both, we're going to put it at half of 0.145. So for your block, you're going to put the pivot at 0.145 divided by 2. And we're going to do the same for the extrude on the X. And now we're also going to do it on the merge node because we're going to use this merge to rotate. And now you can use the merge to rotate and it will rotate everything together like so. And now if you go back to your previous logo, you can take the camera, the spotlight, merge and renderer, copy them. Come to your new one. You can get rid of that. Paste. And if we connect into this merge, your camera and your lights are set up the same as they were previously. And again, just drop onto your media out so that it goes back to the timeline. Okay, part three, Instagram logo. Now, as the more observant amongst you will have noticed, I've already done this because I can't be doing it again. It takes too long. Basically, each of these groups, if you look at the logo, you can see that you've got these sort of bars. So you would use the Boolean node to take one outline so the, the bigger outline oops that's not what i meant to do so you've got the outer edge of your logo which would make a lozenge much like the x black background you then have an inner path which you would use to cut the same way we cut the bar out of the X, you would use the inner path to cut a hole in the bigger background. So you've got that set up here. As I say, because of the way it's kind of working, it goes off screen and it's a pain in the bum. But you can see you've got the two paths and basically the inner path is being subtracted from the outer path. The same applies for the inner circle. You've got two paths, an outer and an inner, and the inner path is basically being subtracted.
from the outer path of your circle. So you've then got the little dot which is here all on its own and that's just a solid sort of mat. Those three elements are then merged together and then run through the extrude node which gives us our shape. The point of part three is adding color to this shape. So bring in your original PNG and pipe it into the green material input of the extrude. Now, as you can see, this doesn't look right. It doesn't fit right. So what you need is a node called a UV map. So shift space bar UV, put the UV map in. Now, if we view the UV map, you can see that it's laid flat at the minute. We need it face on to our object. So change orientation to Z and then drop the size down to one for each of your axes. Now at the minute, if we rotate our shape, the texture doesn't rotate with it. So to overcome that, Go to your UV map and check lock UV on animated clips or animated objects. And that should then hold the texture to the object as it rotates. The other thing you notice as you come to the side is that we're not covering the side edge. So to do that, go back to your PNG, select it, shift space bar and type erode to get an erode dilate node. With the erode dilate selected, push up the amount and you will fill in those blanks. And there you have it. And the final one I'll show you, but I'm not going to go through. It's just to blow your mind, really. Um, this is my channel logo and it ended up looking something like this basically um, if you look at the SVG it's got lots of paths some of the paths are fairly easy so the inner and outer circle with just a boolean to sort of split them But then the various text elements ended up needing to be chopped as well. So you've got, for example, the S in each case. In each case has a cutout. So I had to get the path for the S and then use Booleans to cut out this section. These paths are all sort of isolated so they were fine again for this s i needed to get the cutout the t was fine the a n and then this last bit at the end you have one path that encompasses this s f the l and the d with various cutouts where you've got multiple cutouts which is this one if you get all your cutout paths and merge them together, you can then use one Boolean to cut all those little bits out of the main sort of path. And eventually I ended up with my logo in this kind of form. Now, what you will notice in the SVG, no, because I didn't put it in the SVG, I took it out. Um, what you'll notice in the PNG is this text under here. I didn't see the point in doing that as an SVG, so I actually blanked that out with a mask when I exported the PNG to make into the SVG. So when you look at the SVG, it actually doesn't have the text in. 
and to get the text I too far this really kills my system let me put that against a black background it might show a bit better so to get the text here I basically chucked in a text 3d node and just added it to the merge uh, the gold is a shader that you can get through reactor called kick-ass shaders I just applied that to the whole thing and the rotation is done in this merge node where you've got your text coming in your ring and logo coming in and then that's animated so yeah that's my logo there you have it extruded 3d logos on DaVinci Resolve 18.6 free and studio version with no plugins other than visiting a website, which basically isn't a plugin. Hope you found it useful. If you've got any questions or queries, please come and find me over on Jake Whip's Discord server. I'm happy to answer comments on YouTube, but it's not ideal for sort of backwards and forwards conversations. So yeah, come find me on Discord. Please feel free to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will catch you on the next one. Cheers.